Everyone startles, some of us very readily and very strongly. This is Cheikh Rahma Kamis. This is Cheikh Maimun Hussein. In Malaysia, persons who startle readily and strongly, like Cheikh Rahma and Cheikh Mun, are called Latas. Lata is also the name of the behavior complex built around hyperstartling. The woman facing us is Haja Misabani. She's a Lata. <laughs> She's 70 years old. Her Lata began when she was 62. Speak. How long have you been like this? A long time. Eight years now. It began when my mother died. I was very sad. I was sitting quietly like this, thinking my mother is gone. Someone came from behind. He grabbed me and said, what's up? I was startled. My body trembled like this. My mind went blank. When my body stopped trembling, he teased me again. I picked up a stick and hit him. I couldn't think. What could I know? Later, wherever I went, people liked to watch me. They thought I was pretending. They poked me over and over until I became ill. The man in the suit is Pawang Lumon, an indigenous healer. His wife, Chit Layut Ali, is a Lata. 
At first one is merely startled. One sees a centipede, or a snake, or a coconut leaf falls, and one is startled. Then someone sees that happen. Later when he sees me again, perhaps he will poke me in the ribs. After a while something can happen. Take an ordinary person like Betsy here. If she startled, whenever you see her, you poke her in the ribs. After a while, she'll get very flustered. She'll say whatever comes out. If you tell her to dance, she'll dance. If you poke her in the ribs whenever you see her, she'll do this too. That's what it's like. This is Sidang Hussein Dalip. He's the village headman. Tapi kalau kalau orang cuci datu sida. If someone poked you in the ribs every day, would you become a lata or not? Kalau cuci sama-sama. If it were done face to face like this, I think not. But if it were done from behind and over and over, I think I'd become a lata too. But not if I caught sight of the person doing it. But if a person is lata, one can put her into a lata state even from the front. Because they are so easily startled? Yes. If we don't poke them in the ribs, they don't become lata. If we keep poking a normal person like that, he'll become a lata. It doesn't take long. Five days poking over and over. Little by little by little, a person gets quite flustered. Not everyone is a lata, right? Only certain ones. Like me, I'm a lata. Like Chekma, she's a lata. In the village here, only certain ones. Not everyone, no. If everyone were like that, it would be like the whole world was crazy. As Che Layut points out, not everyone becomes a lata. Many of the villagers think that a tendency to lata runs in families. Nenek Kamsiatna thinks so, but she's not quite sure. Once it starts, it becomes hereditary. If a mother is Lata, her children will be too. Still, my mother was Lata and I and my children aren't. Sometimes a mother is Lata and her children are too. Grandmother is Lata. My mother was Lata, but I'm not. My brothers and sisters aren't either. The role of heredity in Lata, if any, is uncertain. One thing that is certain is that the overwhelming majority of Latas are women. Villagers say this is because women have less samangat, or soul substance, than men. They also point out that it's safer to startle women. Many more women than men are Lata. There aren't many men. Women's semangat is a bit weaker than men's. Men have rather stronger semangat. Men's semangat is a bit stronger. Because even their physical strength is greater than women's. Because if a man becomes lata, when people poke him suddenly in the ribs, he might become strong. So people fear he's striking back, but people don't fear women much because they're weaker. People are afraid to poke and startle men. Even other men don't like to do it to each other. It's women who like to poke each other. 
When they're sitting around, someone pokes someone, someone else pokes someone else. Women are shy about poking men. Shy or afraid? Shy? Well, shy and afraid too. Muhammad Hassan Rahmat is the only man in the village who admits to being Lata, though the villagers told us of two others. Ever since he was young, Tok Muhammad Hassan has been teaching Bursilat, the Malay art of self-defense. When he's startled, he assumes Bursilat poses. When startled, both ordinary persons and latas sometimes hit out. In this case, the woman hitting out is a lata, or a layman. When startled, both ordinary persons and latas often blurt out something that they normally wouldn't say, usually something silly or holy or obscene. Is it always that much it can be started to eat? Oh, black and blue prick. <laughs> uh, what, what just happened? A boy poked me. What was it that Machi said after that? What did I say? I don't know what to do. I said black and blue prick. What Cheikh Rahma said is indecent by Malay standards, and she'd never say it in ordinary speech. However, she's been startled, so it's excused. It's just considered part of Lata and funny. Sometimes, when a lata is poked over and over, she becomes so flustered that her speech gets very scrambled. Paints, paints, make small, small flowers. Growing makes small, small flowers, like the food cover. Take it near the kitchen, kitchen. Below, below. Go and take, go and take it. Go and take the food cover. Like this, like this, like this, then paint it. Go and take it near the rice, kitchen door. There isn't any. <laughs> After being startled, Lata's become highly aroused. Though her friends try to quiet her, it's hard for Chikma to settle down. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, it's finished. Notice how intently Che'ara watches me. When someone is startled and highly aroused, his or her attention is focused narrowly. Um, can you ask her for me? Was she really startled when when Che Asma hit the hit the ground? Was she really startled or not? This narrowed attention tends to be caught by prominent or unusual objects, like our shotgun microphone and our camera. 
takut. Tak nak sana, sana, sana. Ya. Ini pun debu lah, kemah. Pun ni apa buahan? Oh, debu. After Alata is startled, movements may also capture her attention, and often she will match them. You can make her dance. Aroused and with attention narrowed and fixed, some Latas not only match movements, but also do what others order them to do, if they're flustered enough and if they're commanded forcefully enough. When she's sitting quietly, we can take a piece of wood and bang it. Or we can poke her in the ribs over and over and she'll become Lata. She gets startled. Then if we order her to hit or dance, she'll hit or dance. And she'll do whatever we tell her to do with what she's holding. Whoever is in front of her will be hit. That's what a lata does. If someone pokes and startles me and orders me to do something, I wouldn't know what I'm doing. I might even take off my clothes. She only gets flustered if she's poked and startled. If we were just to tell her normally to take off her clothes, she wouldn't do it. But if she were poked and startled first, she might. Spouses and other family members can't do much to protect Latas. Latas are considered fair game. I don't believe there is anything we can do. We can't scold much because this kind of teasing is considered acceptable. But if it's too extreme, we can scold a little. It happened to my sister at a wedding. People kept startling her with pokes in the ribs over and over. After she became Lata, they ordered her to do all sorts of things and she did whatever they ordered. Finally, someone ordered her to take her clothes off and she did that too. She didn't know what was happening, so she just stripped off. When she took her clothes off, the people around her were embarrassed and her children were embarrassed too. One of her children got very angry. He gave her a stick and told her to hit the person teasing her. But instead of hitting him, she smashed all the dishes and plates. Her children were furious and they took her home. When she came to her senses, she was ashamed. It wasn't right or fair to do what they did to her, ordering her to strip. Startling her should have been enough. When she's that flustered, she doesn't know what she's doing. Whatever the audit she did, like a person without shame. Although they may be embarrassed, Latas are not considered responsible either morally or legally for what they do after being startled. A long time ago, I heard a story. It happened when the British governed here. When the British were here, there was a court in Pengkalan Bala. Major Bawal was the judge. He was responsible for sentencing. One time, a lata was holding a knife when someone came up from behind, startled her with a poke and ordered, Step! Right away she stepped and she stabbed a man to death. When the victim died, she was arrested by the police. A while later, when the time for the trial came, she was taken to court. During the hearing, the judge asked, Why did you kill that man? She said, I didn't know what I was doing. When I killed him, I didn't know anything. I'm a Lata. And someone poked me and startled me. 
I didn't intend to kill anybody. I lost my reason because I was startled by a poke in the ribs. And when I was ordered to step, right away I stepped. Because of that, I plead not guilty. About a week later came the trial. To prepare for it, the judge ordered a plank to be studded with nails. About ten nails. Then the plank was positioned with the points of the nails facing up. A policeman came up behind the lata and poked her in the ribs and he shouted, Slap those nails. Right away the old lady slapped down on those nails. When she slapped down on the nails, blood began to gush from her hand. The judge had to agree. Truly, this woman is a real lata. This old woman is not guilty. The guilty one is the person who poked her. So the woman who poked the lata was the one who was sentenced to be hanged. Sometimes latas are teased for a very long time, even if they're obviously exhausted. Watch how Chiara is not permitted to escape, and notice how tired she appears. <laughs> Latas are startled and teased like this over and over and over again. One way to cope is to accept the role of a lata and play it for all it's worth. After all, a lata is not considered responsible for anything she does after being startled. <laughs> It's clear that Chit Moon enjoys the clowning that the Lata role permits. <laughs> Notice the eh sound Chit Moon repeatedly makes. It functions as a kind of self-startle, and by signifying that she's been startled, it justifies what she does. Latas say eh only when performing, and then only when others aren't startling them enough. <laughs> Heterosexual men who are Lata strongly resist entering the Lata state. They don't voluntarily clown or perform. In contrast, homosexual male transvestites, who are frequently latas, usually accept the lata role. Eggy, come, Eggy! Come! Stand the photo, Eggy! Take photo! Call Eggy, take photo! Come, this young man is not from our village, but come. rather from a nearby city. Come! 
É aqui? Kita <laughs> Pajamisa, who earlier described how her lata began, is a dignified woman. So at first, becoming fair game for startled teasing wasn't easy for her. But she's learned to cope and even to use the role of being a lata for some teasing of her own. After being interviewed, she offered to let us film a lata performance. The couple you'll see playing with her are her neighbors. Notice how they shape and modulate what she does. <laughs> Macam Ya mana tuan kata sudah diam Diam kata dia. Ya, macam mana dia kata diam? Kata diam. Oh, diam kata dia. Diam, sudah. Ha, 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 ha. Cukup. Cukup apa? Eh, cukup nak lagi. Eh. <laughs> sudah, cukup tu. Cukup. Cukup. Abe kata dia. Kata tak. Tepak dengan dia. Oh, <laughs> tepak dengan dia. Abe tengok bang ni dah. Abe kena dia buangkan. Abe tengok bang ni. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sini tidur nak jelas tak? Tidur. Tidur pula kau. Tidur nak tidur. Ada yang terlelap ni kan? Terlelap. Bukan. Tidak. Yang diam. Aku tidur pula. Rehat lah sikit. Orang rehat duduk atas kursi meja. Ini semua tidur, semua duduk. Apa yang salah? Ya pula saya selalu tidur. Tidur sama duduk, mahu tak itu. Jahanam kawan. Mahu pula, mat. Everyone startles, and everywhere, some people startle more readily and more strongly than others. In this composite film of a laboratory experiment, the two guns behind the women will fire simultaneously. Try to watch both women. The woman on the left is teased by her family and friends. Sometimes they startle her intentionally too, just to see what she'll do. But she's not intentionally startled often or in public, or by casual acquaintances. I believe that if she were a Malay villager, she would be made into a Lata. However, Malaysia is not the only place where startling readily and strongly has been elaborated in a culture-specific way. The island of Hokkaido in northern Japan, where the Ainu people live, is another. Here are excerpts from a film collected there in 1936. The Ainu people shown are not related either ethnically or culturally to the Malays. You'll see hyper-startling, flustered behavior, hitting, matching, dancing on command, and sexually explicit gestures in this culture-specific elaboration too.
Behavior complexes much like Lata have been reported from many parts of the world. Wherever hyper-startling persons are startled often and teased, the same behaviors are seen. Hitting, matching, obedience, and saying vulgar words. However, the details of what happens, who may startle whom, how the audience modulates what happens and how it is all understood, these are always shaped by a particular cultural setting. Lata, as we've been seeing it in this film, is specific to Malay culture. It's a Malay way of dealing with hyper-startling persons. At weddings and at dances, in this case, at our research project's farewell dance, Malay villagers play with their Lata neighbors. Hyperstartling is a physiological state, but Lata is an interactive process. It's a culture-specific elaboration of the startle reflex.